You had questions, and some of them really made us think. In this episode of Your Questions Answered, we're tackling your comments from our last accessory belt video. We're talking bypass oil filtration, crankcase breather hoses, raw water pumps, and how we're managing those massive bus alternators. Oh, and if you've got a squeaky belt solution for us, you're not alone. And the question of the week? Let's just say Blaine's already off dismantling part of the engine to go check. Let's get into it. Hi everybody, I hope you enjoyed the last video there. Uh, still lots of stuff to do on the engines to get these ready to go and we're just gonna keep plugging away on uh, different projects that we're working on. But this week's Q&A was on the belt drive system. So we're gonna get into that and uh, stay tuned till the end because we've always got the question or comment of the day. Okay, we've got a, a bit of a funny question from uh, Nivlak Zokliw. Uh, I'm assuming that's backwards, so uh, yes, yes it is. Um, I have to admit that all this explaining is pretty much going over my head. But my question is, what will your overactive brain do to entertain itself when you're finished this project? Oh, don't scare me. That, that's, that's just, that's a, that's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> finished? I, I can't be finished. There's, there's far too many things for me to think of. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm still really, really hopeful that I can get to some sort of a hybrid system at some point, and I spend a lot of time looking into that, and uh, I'll probably just keep doing research on that until that becomes viable for us. Next question up is from Sheldon McLaughlin, 8904. Do you, no, it's not McLaughlin. No, it's something different. Anyway, uh, do you plan on doing uh, or putting a bypass oil filtration system on each engine to help control the soot and oil and not so much extend oil changes? Uh, something like Primo Plus by Big Rig Power, a Canadian company, Ems Oil, OPS, Gulf Coast, question mark. Uh, another filter system would be a coolant antifreeze uh, filtration system. Uh, so, uh, if you look back in the past videos, I actually do have bypass filtration installed on these engines. Uh, I've got the AMS oil version. It doesn't keep the oil as clean as I had hoped. Uh, I might end up doing something more with it later. I, I haven't really decided yet. Uh, kind of got me interested in some, uh, what do they call it, the centrifugal ones as well. We'll see, but for the time being, the oil stays clean enough, just not as clean as I'd really like to see it. Uh, as far as the coolant side, uh, maybe one day we'll do coolant filters. I don't have any on them now, but never know what I'll end up doing in the future. So Brent McMahon asked, uh, what are you going to do with the crankcase breather hose? Uh, still tossing around a few options with that. Uh, I definitely don't want to get much for oil vapor back into the inlet of the turbo, uh, although that's likely where it's gonna end up going at some point just maybe with a big air oil separator in between. Uh, but I just, I haven't decided yet. Uh, there's a chance that it, it might be atmospheric out of the stack or something, I don't know. Uh, but for now, I'll probably just go to the inlet of the turbo. The lazy dog. We have another question from Sean Newland, 7486. You seem like a very good DIY kind of guy. My only thought at this point is with all that custom work, who's gonna fill in the gaps when stuff gets broke? Belt numbers, raw water pump numbers, pulley ratios, all that good stuff. Documenting all the different stuff seems smart. Might come a time someday that someone else might need to know. My hat's off to your family. Definitely love to watch the never ending sea trial. Side note, what tattoo do you have on your finger and what's it stand for? Well, um, for most of the stuff that I'm building that are, that's custom, uh, that actually is, you can't get it off the shelf, it's like the big heavy brackets and stuff, and that stuff just, it's not a wear part. They, they don't typically break, especially not with the six cylinders. The inline sixes are super smooth. There's not a lot of vibration, so chances of that stuff breaking is slim to none. Um, as far as the belts and pulleys, I do keep that information on hand. Uh, usually I'll keep the sleeves of the belts and the pulleys and I'll put them in the chart table. I also have a logbook that's really desperately needing filling out and Janice reminds me of that often enough. And uh, yeah, so I, I need to get that filled out. I need to put all that info in there and it, it will be in there for future owners as well. Uh, so hopefully that's enough. Uh, as far as the tattoo, um, what that is, is it's, it's a compass, and uh, Janice has one as well. 
and that's our wedding ring. Uh, we decided that working on the boat with gold rings, especially with me doing electrical and you know things to catch stuff on, my dad actually lost his finger from a wedding ring when he was younger. Uh, we just decided that it was a bad idea to have them on all the time when we were working. So we ended up just having the tattoos done to eliminate that risk. I hope you all are enjoying all the videos. Uh, we really appreciate you watching them. And kind of like PBS, this channel is supported by viewers like you. Uh, if you guys want to help us out with making the videos and keeping going, check out the link below. You get uh, membership for ad-free videos and early access, as well as an extra video every Wednesday. So check it out. Next up, we've got a question from Yantosti4940. Are you sure the raw water pumps are up for the job? My concern is that they're designed for torque only and not the forces from the belt. Uh, so, they yes, they are on the Detroits. They are simply spun off the, the rear of one of the camshafts. Uh, and yes, it is fully torque. However, they use some pretty substantial uh, bearings in there. There's actually double rows of uh, balls, ball bearings in there. And they're big, like it's, it's not an issue. They, with the belt loading on these, it will never be an issue. Uh, great question though. We have a question from none nowhere by. <laughs> So I recall some time ago you had purchased a large bus type alternator, 24 volt, 48 volt, can't recall, for charging your lithium ion system that you mentioned, uh, that they're controlled by wake speed regulators. Curious as to how those integrate or whether they do at all. Uh, we, I don't have the engine alternators up and running yet. Uh, however, I am running two of those alternators on my main gen set. So I've re removed the old, uh, um, uh, permanent magnet gen set head because it wasn't working properly uh, and I've got two alternators on there and I've got the wake speeds running on that and they seem to integrate quite well. Uh, I've got all my readouts on my Victron equipment uh, which is awesome. They're integrated into my battery management system so it can turn them on and off um, at certain charge levels and technically they are able to follow charge commands however having a little bit of a a disconnect there because I think my BMS doesn't quite have all of the data that it needs to be sent out and I need to get in touch with Orion about that or uh, Ewart Energy Systems about that just to see if that's something that we can maybe add in the future because that's the only reason I can think of why it, it won't do that um, is because there's data missing in the can stream. Next question up from Ken Siler 9208. Why not use a cutoff wheel to cut off the top part of the bracket where it's welded, then clamp the bracket to make the gap you just made close up, then re-weld it? Um, that would make it tighter. That is probably where I'll end up going with it. Um, the problem being is if the pulley's here and the bracket comes around the side here, uh, that's the part of the bracket that I'd have to clip and, and pull in. Well, the bolt that holds that to the mount uh, bar is like half a millimeter away from the belt. There's not really any room to pull it tighter. Um, one thing that I was thinking of doing is taking out the bolt that's in there and swapping it out for a flathead bolt, uh, countersink it in, and that'll give me another probably quarter of an inch, which is probably enough because that would add up into like half an inch at least of more belt tension. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've got some thoughts on that and that's probably the way that I'll go with it. Uh, we've got a question from Andy Guest, 6543. Excellent job with the custom work. If you run into issues at sea when a distance from home, how will you fix the custom made parts or replace them? Well, I always have my welder aboard. Uh, it comes with us everywhere. It runs off of our lithium bank. Uh, it works just like it does anywhere else. And I also keep metal on board too. So I can typically get things up and running uh, when we have failures, even if it's in a temporary standpoint. So basically that's about it. I'll just stick patch whatever I have to to make it work and until we can get back to land and make something more permanent if I can't make it permanent at sea. 
Uh, we have a question from Richard G 8651 Sounds almost silly, but did you try another stretch belt from a different manufacturer? The dimensions may be the same, but slightly tighter to prevent that horrible belt slip or screech on startup. Uh, even from the same source, the belts may be fractionally different. Uh, very true. Um, the unfortunate bit with the stretchy belts is there are very, peop very few people that are manufacturing them um, for different sizes. It seems like some manufacturers will offer uh, one size and other manufacturers will offer other sizes. Um, so it, I, I, I do plan to use a new belt, uh, mainly because when I was test fitting, I had that belt on and off multiple times. And really with the stretch fit belts, you're only supposed to put them on once and leave them on. Uh, so there is a chance that I overstretched it um, and made it permanently overstretched. Uh, so I'll try a new belt first and see how that goes. Um, I found that when I go to start the engines and it's screeching, if I put pressure on it, it, it stops and then it'll run just fine after that. But occasionally when I'm putting pressure on it, uh, if I'm off on the center, it'll push the belt over one rib. So it'll actually, on the supercharger pulley, it'll push it up onto a little ramp. And just that little bit of additional tension, uh, if I don't notice it when the engine's running, the next time I start the engine, it doesn't squeal. So it's it's close. It doesn't need a lot more tension. It's, it's very, very close there. Uh, so hopefully just putting a new belt on there will be enough to get it sorted. So I've got a question from Cajun Josh. Uh, what would the pros and cons be of having fabricating an electrically driven water cooling loop for the engines? Uh, wonder if you could have done a large AC motor driven water pump plumbed to both engines with a redundant backup built into the loop. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great idea, and I probably could have. Uh, it's, it's not industry standard per se, but I mean, honestly, if I could avoid having to mess with impellers and all that crap, I probably would. Uh, the, the benefit with AC motors is they're incredibly reliable, uh, but the downside with AC motors is you need an AC source continuously, and our inverters will do that. But if I ever had an inverter failure or something like that, that could cause some trouble, I suppose. So yeah, it would be a good option. If I, if I went that way with it, I would probably do like a mag drive pump. Uh, the way those work is there's actually a magnet driven by the motor and then the pump housing goes on with um, basically like a receiver that goes inside of the magnet. The beauty with that is, is there's no shaft seal. It's all enclosed within the end. And if you could get one of those made of polymer or something, you'd have no corrosion issues, you'd have no shaft seal issues. Uh, it, it'd be a pretty elegant solution. But like I said, downsides would be AC power would be required to push it. And if we had a problem with that system, that could be an issue. The mechanical impeller pumps, hard to go wrong there. They'll just keep going as long as the belts will turn them. Next up, we've got a question from that Dave 86 Did you or could you consider making the accessories electric drive, add another alternator, battery, and charge system for each engine? Thus, the engine is only driving the propeller and alternators and internal water pump? Question mark. Um, raw water pumps could be linked if one fails to keep the boat moving. Uh, I guess that's similar to the last question we had there, but uh, yes, you, you could. Um, it's there's there's something in simplicity with the belt drive system and being able to have it all run that way sure there might be some additional maintenance that you have to do uh, but you know who knows maybe one day i might look into something like that but for the time being it seems to all be working pretty well and we'll probably keep it Richard Dinier, 9555, asked, really liked your videos. My question, if the raw water pumps were gear drive on the Detroits, do they have the right bearings for a sideways tension setup? I did answer this a bit earlier in the video here. You probably saw it. Um, the bearings are huge in these things. Uh, they should have no problem with the minimal side loading that they'll have. Um, so yeah, they're, they should be just fine. Bruce Young, 1343, asked, question, have you heard these engines run prior to installing them? No. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, lot of stuff that had to be done in the boat in place, uh, like wiring in the ECUs, because uh, they're not mounted to the engines anymore, um, exhaust work, just a, a ton of stuff. Uh, so no, uh, that being said, I've been 
building engines in my job for 15 years, uh, pretty confident with my abilities to make stuff function well. Uh, so no, I, I, I didn't test them. Uh, I did plan to start them on the hard before we went into the water. However, that didn't happen either. We actually were in the water when we fired these for the first time. Um, so yeah, I wish I could have, but I didn't. Uh, next question, we've got Redgrave V2P. Uh, that other comment was not for this video. Anyway, that was some serious perseverance. Have you considered a slotted bracket with a threaded tensioner? Um, I didn't originally because stretch belts and I figured that would be just fine. And it likely would have been had I got my designs right and got everything tensioned properly. Um, however, might be something I'll do at this point. Maybe I'll modify that bracket for a threaded tensioner, leave the stretch belt on there, and just have it where it can have some movement there. Uh, so may end up going that way, not sure yet. It's, uh, it's low on the ultimate priorities currently. Uh, there's lots of other things we're getting really close to leaving on our big trip, and uh, there's just a few bigger fish to fry. Uh, next question is from Mr. Robert Harrod. Uh, hi guys, just a thought on the water pump belt. Could you not construct a weighted tensioner to stop the squeal? For example, a heavy pulley just running on top of the belt. Um, that might work. I don't know. I hadn't really put a lot of thought into that. I suppose if I was going to go through the trouble though of making the bracketry for that, I'd probably put a spring-loaded tensioner on it. Um, but who knows? I'm going to try a new belt first and see if that fixes it. But uh, for the time being, I just get by by pushing on it every time we start the engines. <laughs> All right, so now we're down to the comment of the day, and it is a comment this week. Um, it's from Bart Lange S5R. How did you seal and or lubricate the bearings on the raw water pumps? They used to get lubricated through the gear train on the V12s. You know, I really had to think about this one. I could have sworn when I had those pumps apart that they were sealed bearings, however, You've got me thinking now, so um, that's incredibly important. Uh, obviously, if one of the bearing end of the bearings is open and it's not getting lubrication, that's going to end very poorly. So uh, yeah, I've now got the job of pulling some things back apart again and confirming that because, uh, like I said, it's been a little while now and I don't recall. Uh, however, if they're not lubricated, they've done pretty well because uh, we've got some time on the engines now and uh, they haven't failed. So I guess that would be a good thumbs up for how well the Detroit pumps are made. And that concludes this week's question and answer. I uh, hope you guys got all your questions in. If you didn't, pop them in the comments and I typically get to them there at some point. Um, for next week's video, we've got uh, the fuel system. Obviously, these engines require some pretty clean fuel. Got to do something with the old piece of crap system that we had in place. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see you next week. If you haven't seen how we built the custom belt drive system for our Cummins 6.7s, now's the time. Head over to From Truck to Boat, Building My Custom Cummins 6.7 Belt Drive and check it out. You'll get all the details behind the questions we just answered.